Hello everyone. I'm back. Part two of shamanic death. <sighs> well, I've got a lot of feedback from the first video. I have in turn been pondering doing a second and here I am. So basically, quickly, I will go over the first video and what a shamanic death is and why it's important. A shamanic death is something that we go through many times in our life, sometimes unaware of, sometimes we are aware of them. They usually kick into gear after a traumatic instance, whether that be an accident, near-death experience, death of a loved one, traumatizing relationship, friendship, family relationship, um, abuse, and so forth. Um, recovery from addiction can kick into a shamanic death, learning how to live sober again. That's a whole reality all its own. So shamanic death is breaking down layers of self that kick in a rebirth, the new you. So part two of shamanic death is highlighting the fact that there is massive amounts of inner child shadow work that should be done. And yes, I put the parentheses on shadow work because it's not just regular inner child work. To me, I consider inner child work something of the nature of feeling like a kid again, bringing that liveliness back to you, um, you know, embracing a childlike energy full of imagination, wonder, and magic. Inner child shadow work is a little different. Now, this is parts of you. This is layers of you. Now, <clears throat> some may consider you a layer of an onion. Uh, un some people say in the spiritual community, you're like an onion. There's just layers and layers you're peeling back. I agree with the layer concept, but I don't necessarily consider it an onion. I consider it a tree and the layers of a tree because trees also are rooted and roots are all connected. And these layers of the tree all have different meanings, all have different uses. So what I guess what I'm trying to say here is the other side, the other layer of inner child work is inner child shadow work. This is the more negative aspect of your childhood. This is similar to the trauma that you're experiencing in your shamanic death. This is the layers, the roots that connect the shamanic death that you're physically in at the time. Now, I, I, I've been through multiple. In each time, the, sh the inner child shadow work has been different. It's a different layer. It's a different experience. It's a different conditioning. It's a different programming within me that is not just from my parents, but it's from my parents' parents and parents' parents, rooted within our ancestral line. This is something that's passed down to us. Um, <clears throat> not always the same. It can be played out different, and it's not always through generations. It could also be past life connections. So, the pivotal part of your rebirth is, is understanding and connecting these layers, these roots, and seeing where they're coming from. Um, so basically with... <clears throat> it keeps changing my music, honey. <laughs> uh, it's trying to formulate a playlist for me, even though I asked them not to. Um, but apparently some of the music I like turns into heavy, heavy metal, and I am not that kind of Viking. Um, I don't hate on it. It's just tough for me to connect to fully. I am more about the traditional uh, music and so forth. So, but anyways, a little lighter sounding. Um, it helps me concentrate, helps me stay grounded. Um, I was more of a rap person, so it's metal's t tough for me to listen to. But anyways, that's a totally different subject. Um, so basically, the layers and the roots that connect the shamanic death you experience, there's not much moving forward into a rebirth if you're lingering in those roots and those connections and, and sticking to them. Um, so, you know, 
shamanic deaths are breaking around uh, breaking away layers now think of like a dead root rotting on a tree you know when your plants there's a leaf that's discolored you're gonna clip that off your plant so it doesn't destroy the rest of it this is where I want your focal point to be I want you to understand that these roots these layers these these connections are almost tainting your rebirth it's not allowing you to have that rebirth because it's almost sucking you back into that shamanic death and allowing you to you feel a little reborn from it you feel a little better from it because you've come out of it but you're not fully healed you're not fully reborn into the person you are because you're lingering in that shadow in that inner child shadow so it, it, it's very it's it, it's at first looking at a little difficult to see sometimes you have to see it a few times before you can truly understand its origins its roots where it's coming from sometimes you have more than one reasoning for it sometimes you can have this root is almost layered into it's it's rooted into so many layers of the tree that you only you not only have a past life energy remnants of it you have an ancestral energy remnants of it as well as almost it's been within your bloodline so long that you've lived multiple lifetimes trying to fix this trying to release this so something was said to me that really helped me understand uh you know not reliving that um staying in that shamanic death and actually being reborn from it you know they had said I had I had made a comment about you know even relatives and understanding their their path in a similar situation or even that I could see how it turned that way um and the person said well you know you're not them you can change it you can do it differently and it clicked like a light bulb in my head. Doing it differently would be not entertaining it at all, would not be walking through it at all, would be understanding that if I try to do it differently, that I would just be reliving the same pattern in a different situation or manner. So that is not in turn healing. That is repeating cycles and staying fixated in the shamanic death and the releasing of layers where you're almost trying to grab onto them because it looks newer, it looks different. But it's still that same lesson that we're presented with as we release layers of ourself. So, you know, these, these, these inner child shadows are very simple. You know, they're, they're the security blankets. They're the temper tantrums. They're the things that you can't get over that formulated and turned into your adult life. Or even, you know, uh, the actions or the rules that you had to abide by. That programming that's within you from being a child, the fearful part, not the fun loving part, the fearful, scared, timid part that did the things because they wanted to avoid the conflict. They did the things because they knew they thought that's what they had to do. That's what they were being told to do. But in turn, it was giving you something that you don't want to hold on to. Um, and you're an adult now, most likely, watching this video. And this is something that you can release. This is something that you can acknowledge and let go of. This is a trauma that you don't want to hold on to. This is an ego part of you that's lingering within your inner child. You know, we love to tap into our inner child and create and to love and to, to express with imagination and have fun. And clearly my music just stopped, so there's validation in that. Um, but importantly is that we have to acknowledge there's still a darker side of that there's the impatience there's the trickster energy the devious natures that we held at also as children that formulated into stronger roots as we got older so i guess what my point is with this video is that i want to express how much 
acknowledging these parts of your ego that you think were just dumb little child things sit and think about how they've manifested and grown and created into a part of your adulthood that is actually causing you not to move forward it's maybe affecting your health maybe it's affecting your job maybe it's affecting your way of life and your viewpoint on things perspective is a big thing and i have noticed that there's um you know a lot of people that hold a perspective of a child i noticed in manners of resolution when resolving one's a situation in one's life or within a, a, a group situation and how they handle those situations. A lot do revert back to the inner child, the part that panics, the one that doesn't want, you know, we all didn't want to read. I know I didn't like reading when I got called on in school. You know, little things, that panic that, that you know, you got all hot and you're like, oh, please not me, please not me, that, that fear-based pattern. Okay, it, it could resemble many things now, depending on the person, as we all are in our own healing. So part two of this shamanic death video, I just, you know, I, I want y'all to, 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 to embrace the part of you, you know, that, that inner child, that, that wondrous part, you know, and acknowledge the darker sides of you maybe there was a depressive stage i know all every kid has it at one point you know <clears throat> and unfortunately some have it longer than others sometimes it form it, it builds into something stronger as adults you know where seasonal things are a thing um you know i feel that we're in a in a heavy influx at this time right now and we are ready to skyrocket into the biggest rebirth possible us as humans are are on the planet at a time where the energy is on an influx and we are able to manifest at a rapid rate and we are at a consciousness level that is to so many unfathomable and and i just can't wait for the day that many more understand what we are capable of and do it for their highest and best, not out of greed. <sighs> so utilize this time now that we're having, the seasonal energy. Energy shifts happen seasonally, not just with the planets. So we're coming into the spring. So we're creating, we're, we're, you know, things are melting, things are starting, will start to grow again. What seeds are we gonna be planting? What are we gonna bring with us into this new weather? We have to weather the storms correctly. And I feel right now at this time, collectively, personally, and around my surroundings, I notice, and I notice yearly, I notice it's a two-year span sometimes with me where things recreate and re, uh, recycle. Um, not so much come up again, but it's a time of, if you didn't do it last year, maybe do it this year to be thorough. So we're in a time where we're entering into the spring, Beltane's coming, um, you know, the spring equinox. And, and this is a time we want to shed all those extra layers. We're, you know, we're coming out of that hibernation stage. We're, we're entering in the time of, all right, this is necessary right now. This is necessary right now. We need to ration out our energy and allow only the good things to come into spring with us. We don't want rotted roots messing up our harvest. We don't need them to infest and taint our seeds. We want growth. We want expansion. We want to re be reborn into the better version of ourselves. So utilize this influx of energy because it is strong right now. It is very strong. Utilize and understand those moments that trigger you where you don't understand where it's coming from. Frustration, ill intent, even while driving. Stop. Breathe and focus because the energy influx at this time right now is solidifying the way our thought process is, way our energy is vibrating. So if we allow these inner child shadows, these, uh, these little angstiness, even in moments of someone cutting you off, yes, they're an asshole, 
but you pulling in the energy of getting frustrated at them out of something that you can't control is only going to bring a similar energy to you or even just show you and the universe that you haven't released something that is old in you that's stopping you from moving forward because our reactions and our perceptions to things are very important this influx of energy is very telepathically linked and i hope that uh, many of you can understand this message comprehend this message perceive it on a level of understanding because the times are changing now and i know it's a little difficult for some to understand the, the capabilities we have telepathically the bluetooth device is ready to pair is is phenomenal and we need to and i mean the bluetooth device so now to me that's a validation of you know the bluetooth is wireless our brain waves are moving energetically at this this speed that is just creating rapidly and we need to utilize it for our highest and best not stop ourselves from moving forward not hinder us from growing you know we're not going to move forward as a civilization if we don't expand our consciousness and it's a lot about our reactions and our perceptions Ill intent has a lot more power than people can even understand. Um, I know there's a lot of people in magical and spiritual communities that still don't understand that. You don't have to do bad to somebody. You can just think it and it's going to give enough energy the more you do it. You know, um, so why? There's no point. Focus on yourself and uprising to your best and then hopefully infect somebody else with doing things for their highest and their best but you know don't get don't get stuck in the trickery you know we're we're capable of moving forward from that um to me it's seen as inner child shadow work we all have shadow work as adults we're aware of like things that we've done as adults like clear logical thinking like shadow work things that bother us things that you know even self-loathing behavior but the inner child shadow work is something that you know Maybe it wasn't reprimanded. Maybe it was used as an excuse because of the treatment that was given to you. Like maybe you were treated in a certain way and they allowed you to act a certain way because they felt bad or they couldn't provide in a certain, whatever, you know, whatever your situation may be. Um, we don't live there anymore. You know, I mean, there's definitely... I feel like that there is a lot of inner child shadow work that people use as the trauma for excuses as well. Um, so it's almost as if you release that excuse or use of it, use of the trauma. And I mean, trauma as a child, and you can obviously imagine what I'm thinking. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm saying I'm not saying it's something just get over it. Not at all. Um, I guess almost... Look for ways to help others in a situation. You're out of that situation now and still breathing. There's many that aren't. So what can you do to turn that favor and help out? Make a positive out of that traumatic. Maybe see a bad uh, behavior that, you know, you're doing, even if it's not saying hi back to the person that's taking your coffee order. I don't know. Simplest little things. What, but inner child shadow work are those things that we don't want to look at. Those childhood things that we don't want to accept. We don't want to believe. We don't want to acknowledge. We need to start looking at them. We need to stop just thinking that these traumas happen only in adulthood. They don't. They happen in childhood as well. And sometimes shamanic deaths will continue to happen because that trauma is rooted in childhood. That we misconfuse a lot of the times for when it happens in adulthood because it's been manifested over so many times in different scenarios, in different situations. You look at them as different traumas, 
But in all reality, it's still that original trauma played out in a different scenario. So I ask you now, take out your journal and write down those traumas that you've gotten over. Those things that have made you who you are today. Those things that maybe you still aren't over. Those parts of yourself that you're not really fond of. Those thought processes you're not really fond of. Write them all down. Write all those things down you don't like. And then write all those things down you want to be. You want to be reborn to. Express everything. And then see what happens. I guarantee you something better will. And put it out there to the universe because you deserve it. And we all do. So I hope you all can resonate with this message. Shamanic Death Part 2. So if you missed Part 1, you could go back on my YouTube channel and check that out. Um, I will uh, put it in the video description here on this video. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can easily access that. And uh, I hope you all take the time to put in that work for yourself and uprise your energy, your vibration, and help this planet evolve into what it will be in the future. And hopefully it's a good utopia in some aspects, at least energetically. But if you uprise yourself and your being and become balanced within your path and your purpose, all that chaos around you won't mean anything because internally you are centered. Internally, you are at a space of completion and contentment. So I hope you can resonate within your being and want that for yourself. So allow that shamanic death to happen, that inner child shadow work to be released and walk into your rebirth because we are skyrocketing at this time. Good luck, everyone. Peace, love, and blessings. Bye.